The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community and online store built for engineers and hobbyists alike. Join now and browse the store at element14.com. Um, hey Ben. What are you working on? Well, clearly I'm making a steampunk outfit in case I ever find myself at a steampunk convention. All right, yeah, it's important to have a great outfit, but... I mean, this isn't steam rocket science. Right, but wouldn't you want to bring something that actually does something? That's not really the premise of steampunk. It's mostly about hot gluing objects to clothing. Still, you could make something that's steampunky, mechanical, that, I don't know, does something? Well, I guess we can make some sort of maybe mechanical television, like a steampunk display. Maybe a persistence of vision display with yeah. gears and motors and stuff. That sounds cool. And you could it could go along with your outfit. It could complete the ensemble. Yeah, it really ties the room together. Okay, I think we'll try that. Amazing builds, exclusive mods, cutting edge ideas, electronics, engineering, and more. Every week on Element 14's The Ben Heck Show. So persistence of vision is based off the fact that your eyes have kind of a limited refresh rate. So things you see in your eyes tend to persist in your vision, persistence of vision. Um, just like this laser pointer, you know, if you move it up and down very quickly, it appears to be a solid line, even though of course it's a dot moving through space. The dot just moves faster than your eye can refresh. If you had a high speed camera, you would see the individual dot moves, but we can't see that fast. We're usually, I would say it's around 100 frames per second that we can see from my experience. That's why you can tell the difference between like a 30 frames per second video game and a 60 frames a second game, but once you get above 60, it's not quite as clear. Anyway, by using persistence of vision, we can make a special kind of display. The display that we're gonna design, I know this kind of looks like a match, but it's actually a row of LEDs, is going to have a row of LEDs, like a single row, and they're going to be on a rotating drum of some type. And what's gonna happen is this drum is gonna rotate at a very high rate of speed, you know, probably, you know, at least like 100 hertz. Hopefully it moves that fast, 100 hertz. 100 RPM, oh wait, no, that wouldn't be 100 RPM. That would be 600, no, that'd be 6,000 RPM. Yeah, it wouldn't be 60, we want 100 hertz, which would be 6,000 RPM. Yeah. Why would you time anything by the minute? It should all be seconds. Yeah, like microcomputers. Anyway, the idea is this will spin at a high rate of speed, so these LEDs will become a blur. It's like just a blur in your vision. And the trick is, by hooking this up to a microcontroller, the microcontroller can use a timing tab along with an opto switch to detect how fast this thing is spinning and then clock out a single line of dots in a certain pattern so that it forms an image. So when it rotates around, it'll see the, the actually it'll, it'll sense the tab down here and realize it's about to start a, uh, a frame. And then as it moves, the frequency at which it updates act as scan lines. So you've got one line, so you're going like obviously it's not moving back and forth. But instead of so instead of needing you know like a thousand LEDs or whatever it would be, we could do it with a row of like 96. So the real trick with this. The main tricks with this project will be making a row of LEDs that we can drive with a constant current LED driver. We may need to make some PCBs for that. And then the real trick is going to be a rotating drum mechanism that can move quickly enough and smoothly enough. And also, these LEDs will have to be disconnected because obviously we can't be spinning wires around. So we'll probably use carbon brushes to transmit the power and data onto the LEDs themselves. So the microcontroller or whatever's powering this will be out here, driving a motor, spinning this, sending dots into the LEDs that are rapidly spinning. The end result should be, hopefully, a spinning drum that kind of creates the illusion of a cylindrical object, like, like a cylindrical television. Like, like if they were gonna make a television 100 years ago in the steampunk era, this is maybe how they would have done it. So what I'm doing here is I created a part for our TI constant current LED driver. I made it an eagle and I'm drawing a schematic of the PCB that I want to make. So basically you um, power the LEDs, then you sync them into the constant current driver. And there's a set resistor which allows you to, you know, 
set how much current they can draw. And they'll all draw the same amount of current, whether they're 16 of them on or one of them on. And uh, so I'm just gonna do this and design a nice board that we can order. The Eagle design is done. I used the cam processor to turn this into a bunch of Gerber files, which I put into a zip file. And then I can go to Element 14's partner, Pentalogix. They're based in Oregon, in America, so we can get the PCBs quickly for our prototyping needs. I'll just send the files here, hit get quote, and then order. Wow, that was fast. Let's see what we got. Here are the boards that I received from Pentalogix. Now I can attach my constant current LED driver as well as some LEDs. It's like Heisenberg uncertainty principle, like filming an action affects how well you can do the action. So there's only a few parts on this. We have a 0.1 UF capacitor, which I'm going to place here. And then I'm going to place a constant current driver as well. The other parts we will through hole solder manually later. All right, let's put the first couple in the oven and see how they work. Time to solder up some LEDs. I could have used surface mount, but I wanted to use these through hole ones so I could bend them at an angle so they could be facing the end of the circuit board. There's probably some sort of right angle LEDs I could have found, but these will work. I'm gonna push them down so they're all fairly level. And I only tapped one of the leads. Now that they're in place, I'm gonna go in, hit the rest, and then I can snip them off. I just gotta make this three more times so I can put it onto my test frame. I'm adding these resistors to set how much current the LEDs will draw. I left this as a through hole component just because I would be able to choose from all my resistors. I'm using 2.7K as our value, seems to work out pretty good. So I'll solder those in place and then I will start attaching these to my test frame. Now it's time for a tech timeout. We're using a constant current LED driver to drive our lights, and it works exactly like a shift register. So you might ask, why not use a shift register? I've set up this example to show you why. Uh, when there's one light on, it has most of the power of the current going through it. However, when there's multiple lights, they're all dimmer. They don't have a constant current. It depends on how many of them are running. So in this example here, you can see that when they're all on, they get a little dimmer. You can see that by watching the one on the end here. With a constant current LED driver, it works just like a shift register, but the same current is on every light no matter how many lights are on. This is how I shop for products at Element 14. Get the products and information you need fast. Visit element14.com today. These are meant to butt right up to each other. So the distance between these two mating LEDs is the same as the rest of the LEDs. I'll just use two screws for now. This isn't the final frame I'm gonna use, but it uh, just will give us a mounting platform for now. All right, now I'm gonna add some jumpers to bridge all these gaps, and then we'll be able to move on to a demonstration. This wood's got some bend to it, so I'm gonna to wanna to make sure I push it flat as I solder.
With all the connections soldered, we can test this with the program. I have the parallax propeller running these four constant current LED drivers. So there's 16, 16, 16, 16, a total of 64 lights. There are 64 lights. And I just have it cycling back and forth here, but it's definitely working. I've bridged my circuit in these positions. It's kind of like stitching together a glove. So this thing should be all one solid piece. What we'll do in the next episode is take this and mount it on a spinning drum so it'll synchronize using one of these guys, an opto uh, interrupter, and this will spin rapidly. And what'll happen is as it spins this way, it will know where it is roughly, vertically, and it'll change the dots. So it'll be kind of like raster scanning on an old CRT television. So yeah, I think this has a decent shot of working. Now that we had the lights working, it's time to think about how we're going to rotate all of them. So I pulled this motor out of a small cordless drill that we were going to use for another project and didn't. This normally would have a planetary gearbox in front of it to increase the torque, but we're going to use it just like this. There's some nice little teeth on it and a gear that we can use to interface with larger gear. What I'm going to do is have a larger gear like this on the motor and it's going to go to a smaller gear like this on the spinning portion. When we go to a large gear to a smaller gear, that will create a speed increase so we can get that thing spinning as fast as possible. Hopefully we have enough torque to move it. Um, we can always slow it down by putting a half H bridge on this motor and pulsing it, but we can't really speed it up. So we want it to go as fast as possible at the start. In order to make it rotate smoothly, or hopefully smoothly, I've got this um, 14 millimeter skate bearing drawn in. This is one of these guys. And my idea is to use an eight millimeter bolt, have it in the skate bearing like that. And the head of the bolt is on the inside of the bearing. So the outside of the bearing rotates around the bolt. So the bolt will actually be clamped and inert in the frame. And if we go on the screen here, the frame looks like this. There's the frame. The bolt will be fixed in the frame and the bearing will rotate around it. So the LEDs will spin on this bearing, and there'll be two of them, one on either side. What we're doing right now is getting ready for the next episode where we'll actually build this mechanical frame. I'll show you a few more features of it. This portion here is going to be a routed PCB disc. We'll take a PCB that's blank copper, and then we'll use the CNC machine to mill it out to create a circuit. There'll be three lines on each side. One side just needs power and ground, the other side will have clocked at a latch. So it'll be five total lines. And by splitting them up on each side, we'll have more room to do it. And then we'll have some carbon brushes, which are basically spring-loaded uh, contacts that will contact against it. So this thing can spin without wires. Basically, it'll use the rotation to attach itself. This part of the drawing here, you can see how the carbon brushes are going to press against the PCB and they're spring-loaded, so they can deal with deviations. And right here we have an opto interrupter. There'll be a tab on the spinning PCB disc, which you can see right here. That tab will pass through the opto interrupter every revolution so this thing can keep track of how fast it's spinning and either change the rate of the dots or control the speed of the spinning, whichever one works best. We'll have to see. That's all the time we have for today. In our next episode, we're going to laser out all these parts and then start assembling the mechanical rig. Now that we have a good start on the project, I can get back to working on my steampunk hat, kind of like Abraham Lincoln if he was Iron Man. Well, let's unplug the hot glue guns and get to work. Why would you ever want to unplug a hot glue gun? Well, there must be something you could build that is Distracting. <laughs> okay, um, that's great, but wouldn't you want to mip make Mip mape? Uh, <laughs> I felt like you were staring into my soul and it distracted me. <laughs> oh no! 
The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community and online store built for engineers and hobbyists alike. Join now and browse the store at element14.com. <laughs> 